In this video, I'm going to be explaining and showing you how to use the oddly named sponge brush in Affinity Photo on the iPad. Hello and welcome, Andrew Goodman here and in today's tutorial I'll be teaching you what the sponge brush does, how to use the sponge brush, a few examples of using the sponge brush and much more. So let's get into it. Okay, so we're just going to bounce into Affinity Photo again and we'll maybe look at two examples. The first one will be this here pumpkin patch that we worked on a while ago and if you go down to this wee fire icon which is the burn brush we'll look at the sponge tool now to be honest this isn't a tool I use much at all but just for purposes of just going through and trying to cover most most tools we're just going to look at it today and more or less what the sponge tool does really strange term really awful name for it actually it just controls the saturation of the picture so say if I bring it up Again, we've got the contextual tool bar when we're clicking the sponge sponge brush. We'll bring it up nice and big. We'll bring the opacity up. We'll take the vibrance, de-click that. And you'll notice it in the sky quite a bit where it just really makes the sky pop. And I'm not saying I would do this normally, but uh, just for the demonstration of the video. And very quickly, if I do two fingers and three fingers it, it does a nice job of just lifting that up and what you can actually do is just run just out of curiosity wow look at that now this is heavy sat saturation so it, it just really makes that picture pop to me that's too saturated it's, it's, it's too bright it's too colorful I don't think this picture needs that at all and normally again if I'm being honest I don't use this brush too much at all it was nice on the sky and I'd probably make it quite big and what, what I didn't like is when it hits the these back trees it makes it go too bluish so you'd probably bring the opacity down to maybe 50% make it nice the brush nice and big and even if you make the the top of the sky and by that nice feather just bring it down a wee bit I'm drawing like wee circles I don't really think I need to but that's not bad that's that's quite nice as before and that's after and it does make it pop a wee bit more and if you wanted to you could you maybe pick some of these pumpkins here and just just by tapping that's nearly the width of the brush you could just maybe make them just pop just ever so slightly just some of the pumpkins will bring the brush size down again we can move it with our finger when we'll click on it type in a value but for this it's quite nice visually to move your finger and just 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 tap on these and I wouldn't do it for every pumpkin I would just maybe do it for these and I don't even know if I would do it it's just for more purposes of this video it's, uh, it's such a stunning photo this and the colors really the colors really pop so and that just brings it just some of those colours, I like the way these ones just pop a wee bit more. What this brush can also do is desaturate the image, which if saturation kind of really brings the colours up, kind of makes it, makes it more vibrant, more pops, pops more. If you just click the mode, desaturate will take that colour away. And there's nothing I would do to this barn, but just for the purposes of this here tutorial, we'll zoom in and we'll put the opacity full and just by stroking this you'll uh, you'll make the lovely red barn look as if it was in the first few minutes of the Wizard of Oz film and it makes it look black and white which of course isn't what we'll want to do at all we'll uh, undo that if you really wanted to you can maybe bring it down to 25% if, if this barn kind of was standing out too much for you and I don't know if you can see that on the screen, but that just brings it down a wee bit more. We'll maybe bring it down to, uh, or put it up to 75% just to, again, that's, that's far too much. Maybe 50%. And I wouldn't do this at all. Again, it's just for the, the demonstration of the video. And you would do it near, nearer than I do it, would do it. And that just dulls down that farmhouse. But I wouldn't do that. We'll do two fingers. That really makes this picture, in my opinion. Where would you use this brush? You'd maybe use it if there was an item of clothing was too bright 
or something that just just took just uh, just stood out too much. You could that would that would be quite a good tool to desaturate it. Or again, if you wanted the sky, we'll maybe go into another photo and we'll just go into this photo of a few videos back. This was taken on the north coast of Northern Ireland. And if we go back into this sponge tool. Again, when it comes to colour correct, this isn't how I would normally do it, but just again for the purposes of this video. Oh, that's it's still in desaturation. We don't want that. Maybe if you wanted uh, grey skies or dull skies, but uh, this was a nice, fairly sunny day. So we'll change the mode to saturate and we'll just see what that does. And that certainly makes the green pop an awful, an awful lot more. And maybe the beach here too. And I like this here. If we could make this here blue pop an awful lot more and maybe even this this rock it just brings out the colour a wee bit more again I wouldn't maybe not do that this is not what I would normally do but very quickly if we just look of where we started it, it certainly does make it pop and I think it's too much the green in this what I would probably do is bring the opacity down to 50% and just paint in certain bits and maybe try to cover a lot of this green. I thought that beach was quite nice with a wee bit more colour and I really liked in here just getting this kind of this lighter blue. I'll probably not go here. I think that would make it stand out too much. And that's, that's quite nice. That's what it was. That's what it is now. And it just lifts it ever so slightly. And when it comes to colour grading, we're going to look at that on another video. Spoiler alert, I don't do my colour grading in Affinity Photo. I use another app for that. If you want to guess what that app is, feel free to do it in the comments below. Probably quite soon, I'll be doing a wee review of it and maybe a few wee videos of it. We'll still be working in Affinity Photo, but this is just how I work. Normally I touch up all my photos in Affinity Photo and then I use another app to do the colour grading on it. And that's just how I work. There's there's ways of doing it in Affinity Photo and we'll maybe touch on that. But I just like bringing it into another app. So that's the sponge tool. Quite honestly, not a brush. I use too much, but it does have its uses. So there you have it. Hopefully you found this video useful and helpful. And if it was, please like this video. And please subscribe as I'll be bringing out more videos like this each and every week. Feel free to comment below as I read and reply to every single one of your comments. If you like this video, you might also want to check out this video on how I use the smudge brush to create effect. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.